welcome to the examination of the abdomen. First, we have the preliminary steps. Greetings to the patient. Introduce yourself. Get permission for examination. Position of the patient, supine position. Exposure of the patient from the nipple to the mid thigh. Warm your hands. Let the patient relax his abdomen, the hands besides his body, elevation of the neck, flexion 15 degree, should put a pillow, and ask the patient to evacuate the bladder. Second is the inspection. You have to inspect whether there is any dressing in the abdomen. The dressing should be described as being wet or dry. What type of incision, what type of operation, any drains, any urinary catheter, nasogastric should be mentioned at first look of the patient. Now we inspect the abdomen. Is the abdomen is distended or scaphoid, undernourished patient? And uh, to know whether there is distension or no, there is a simple rule. Put the ruler, the ruler on the umbilicus and see whether the ends of the ruler touch the the pubic symphysis below and xiphoid process superiorly. If it touch both of them, then there is no distension. If the patient has distension, then there would be a distance between the xiphoid process and the pubic symphysis. So by this, we can know that there is distension and this distinction can be explained by the 5F, either fatty patient or fluid ascites or platus gases or fecal material or fetus. Now, while I'm standing at the right side of the patient, I'm going to move to the end of the bed to see the abdomen, whether there is any symmetrical or not symmetrical. If it is not symmetrical, then I have to explain what is not symmetrical. Any mass and swelling beside the approximate uh, shape and approximate uh, size. Then I'm going to move again to the right side of the patient. I'm going to bend and watch the abdominal wall movements with respiration movement with respiration, also visible peristalsis to see any visible pulsation, ask the patient to cough, to see any impulse on cough in the inguinal region, in the umbilical, paraumbilical, epigastric region, or any scar or hernia. Also in the abdominal wall, I'm going to see the color of the abdominal wall any change in the color, redness, or tattoo. Second, you watch the umbilicus inverted, inverted. The level of the umbilicus, it should be equal from umbilicus to pubic symphysis, should be equal from umbilicus to xiphoid sternum. Level of umbilicus, any discharge from the umbilicus, any tumor from the umbilicus, any hair foreign body in the umbilicus, I should mention this. Then I should watch for citria, any, ty any type of citria, uh, signs of uh, liver failure, uh, caput midosa, uh, gynecomastia, 
uh, spider nearby. And of course, to be more sure in the hand, do the prince contracture and the flappy trauma. This is uh, the uh, inspection uh, in a brief. Now we come to palpation. Palpation of the abdomen, we have first superficial palpation and the palpation. Superficial palpation, first I have to ask the patient, where is the site of pain? If the site of pain in the right iliac fossa, then I should palpate or start in palpation away from the site of pain. So I'm going to start superficial palpation from the left hypochondrium, and I'm going to do it in the palmar aspect of my finger and do it thoroughly, region by region, looking for first any tenderness, any rigidity of the, of the uh, abdominal wall, any uh, organomegaly, any mass. Left hypochondria, left lumbar, left iliac fossa, epigastric region, umbilical, suprapubic region, right hypochondrium, right lumbar region, and right iliac fossa. Do it thoroughly, looking for, as we mentioned, for any tenderness, rigidity, organomegaly, or mass. After superficial palpation, we come to deep palpation. Deep palpation for organomegaly. First, for hepatomegaly, I'm going to put my hand below the lower chest. And in the right hand, I'm going to palpate for the liver enlargement from right iliac fossa upward with the respiration with the respiration. Now if I feel any enlargement, then I should mention how many centimeters below costal margin, how many centimeters below costal margin, and also I should describe the age of the liver, the surface of the liver, the consistency of the liver, tenderness, and so on. And then we come to the in the palpation of the spleen. Again, I use my left hand below the lower chest and start from right hand in the right iliac fossa below the umbilicus toward the spleen. With the respiration, I should detect any enlargement of spleen. I can turn the patient to my side to be more sure in palpation. Spleen, I should uh, uh, also Feel the notch of discipline, the age of discipline, the movement of discipline with uh, inspiration, the direction of discipline with inspiration downward. Uh, uh, for the kidneys, I can do bimanual palpation with inspiration, bimanual, and from both sides. The bladder, I'm going to do this maneuver. Of course, if I feel the bladder, then I should be more sure in percussion. Also, I should not forget uh, to do PR examination to check for left supraclavicular lymph nodes, to ask the patient to cough, to palpate the hernial orifice over common site inguinal or any scar, and to feel the uh, femoral pulsation, femoral pulsation located in surface anatomy, anterior superior iliac spine, pubic symphysis, midway, one inch below, use two fingers to feel the femoral pulsation, both sides, both sides, pubic symphysis, anterior superior iliac spine, midway, one inch below, I can feel the femoral pulsation from both sides. And now we come to specific signs in deep palpation. If the patient has 
is suspected uh, to have acute appendicitis, then I should look for the uh, specific signs. First, I ask the patient to cough, cough sign, he will feel pain, pointing sign, when I ask the patient where is the site of pain, he can tell me that this is the site of pain and the site is the McBurney point, a general line from anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus and uh, the McBurney point is uh, between the medial two-third and lateral one-third. We call it McBurney point. This is the pointing sign. There is tenderness when I press. I should look at the face of the patient, tenderness. And when I release my hand, rebound tenderness, he will also feel pain. Robsing sign, when I press on the left iliac fossa, the patient will feel pain at the right iliac fossa. Robsing sign. And I have the uh, sour sign. I ask the patient to turn on his left side and do hyperextension of the of the hip, he will feel pain. Obturator sign, I do flexion of the hip and knee joint, flexion of the hip and knee joint, and internal rotation, he will feel pain. This is obturator sign. These signs are specific for acute appendicitis. So signs for uh, acute cholecystitis, and this is called the Murphy sign. You do it in the right hand, or in the left hand. I put my hand on the costal margin and my thumb, my thumb is in, is, uh, in the mid-clavicular line, mid-clavicular line, lateral to the rectus sheath, at the tip of ninth rib. I press, I press with the thumb, press with the thumb, ask the patient to take a deeper breath if he holds his breath, then this is positive Murphy sign. It means there is acute uh, inflammation of the uh, gallbladder. I can do the procedure with the, my right hand. Also, I press below the costal margin, at uh, mid-clavicular point, uh, near the tip or uh, near the tip of ninth rib, lateral to the rectus sheath. When I press hard. As the patient take, take a deeper breath, he will hold it, and this is positive Murphy sign. If there is any mass in the abdomen, uh, such as appendicular mass, then I should uh, palpate the mass uh, and uh, describe the mass, the size of the mass, uh, the shape of the mass, the size of the mass in two directions, uh, fixation of the mass percussion of the abdomen it is for solid organ for hollow organs for fluid percussion for mass for solid organ as we mentioned if we have hepatomegaly or splenomegaly I can confirm uh, it by percussion So I can confirm that there is there is hepatomegaly. Again, in discipline, I can do percussion. It means that there is splenomegaly. For the uh, upper span of the of the liver, I should do percussion of the chest, starting from angle of Lewis. angle of Lewis anatomically in second intercostal space. Mid clavicular line, I do percussion space by space until or until I hear dullness and percussion, it means this is the upper uh, span of the uh, liver. So this is for some organs. And for both organs, <clears throat> I can do percussion in a zigzag way. And changing the 
percussion, I should uh, mention this. Percussion also for fluid ascites. First, I have to do transmitted drill and shifting dullness. Shifting dullness, I start percussion from the umbilicus where the gases of uh, the intestine it will give me a tympanatic sound until I reach to the fluid of ascites become dull. Then I will point this area, ask the patient to turn to my side, wait for one minute, and then again, when I do percussion, this dull area will become tympanatic because the fluid uh, by gravity will turn to the uh, below and gases of the intestine will give tympanatic sound. And when I return, the umbilicus, where at first it was tympanatic, become dull. If there is any mass, I should also uh, do percussion for dullness and tympanatic findings. Percussion also for the uh, back. for uh, renal and tenderness and for the spine. For the auscultation of the abdomen, I'll first try to hear the uh, sounds of peristalsis. And these sounds come every 20 seconds, around uh, three sounds per minute. I should do this in uh, four regions of the uh, four quadrants of the abdomen. Listen until I can hear the peristalsis and how many peristalsis per minute. If I don't hear any peristalsis, I should wait for another minute to uh, mention that there is no sounds of peristalsis as in cases of paralytic areas. So four sides. And then I come to uh, the sounds of brewing of aorta midline, renal arteries below, right and left, external iliac arteries below umbilicus, right and left, femoral artery below mid, mid vinyl point right and left. Then I'll do auscultation for succession splash and, and pyloric stenosis. I'll hold the, uh, the stethoscope, the pair of stethoscope in my fingers and shake the patient. So this is, I, I can hear succession splash. Also, I look for venous hum the liver and portal hypertension and for liver rub and spleen rub due to rough capsule of the spleen or in the liver in inflammatory conditions and with the respiration there is a friction this is the auscultation of the abdomen And at the end, at the end, I should, the final steps is to uh, cover the patient and thank the patient. Of course, you should wash your hands. Thank you for listening.